All right, guys, Bradley Holman here. Welcome back to the channel. It is the dead of summer right now, and uh, I myself am getting ready to go to the Northern Swing, which a lot of guys have already started. Uh, Champlain just went down there at the St. Uh, Lawrence River right now. I'm fixing to make a trek up to upstate New York to Lake Oneida. All this entwined and inter brings in the spinning rods, and uh, that's one thing I want to do an in-depth series about. I talked about the drop shot some in my last video, and a lot of guys were asking about different style of hooks and what all I use with the drop shot, especially around brush piles. Um, I will tell you that there's some different hooks and different things that I'm using uh, in the south around brush piles that I'm not using that's different whenever we go up north and we're smallmouth fishing. So we're going to cover all those things from the drop shots. And I'm even going to touch on the Ned because I don't think that just doing an in-depth series on just the drop shot is quite enough. So I'm going to throw in the two most popular finesse rigs that are out there today going hottest thing on a lake catching the most fish. So you guys hang on and we'll get right to it. All right, guys, let's start with the drop shot. Um, I'm gonna cover everything from rod, reel, line, everything in depth in this series right here. So for me in the South, a lot of times it has to do with, with drop shot worms, robo style worms, hand poured, six inch worms. Um, a lot of times I'm fishing around docks, brush piles, things like that. Same places that we put jigs, that we put 10 inch worms, the same places that we fish all those and catch big fish in the South. I continue to do that once the heat of the summer gets here, but I'll do it with a drop shot. And um, it's light line, um, it takes a little bit of finesse presentation, but it will get you bites when you're not getting bit on all that other stuff that you have been getting bit on back in May and June, and maybe even early July. But once this summer really gets going and you get into July, late July and August, that's when I've really noticed I've caught some really quality fish on a drop shot. Um, I've got lakes here in Oklahoma that are really not considered clear, and I still catch big fish on drop shots, but they're in the exact same places, just like what I was telling you, that I catch them with big baits and big, with big worms, crankbaits and things like that. Now all of a sudden I'm just drop shotting. This is also something that's really big on the TVA system as well. Um, the fish just become conditioned. They get lethargic late in the summer and a finesse presentation will really get them, get them going. So let's talk about the drop shot first. Um, there's two different styles of hooks that I use. This style right here is just a one aught straight shank. This is the hook that I'm using in the south primarily whenever I'm around brush and timber and docks. It's got a little rebarb on it. All that is is just a little shrink wrap. You can buy it at any hardware store. You just melt it with a little bit of a lighter and it sticks right on the top and that just helps hold my bait. This is called the Albright Knot. Um, there's still lots of, lots of pros tying this knot as opposed to tying the FG. The FG is probably a, a great knot, a better knot probably. I know the guys that like it, they love it. Um, the thing that they don't like about this knot that I'm about to tie is they feel like it's too big in the, in the guides of the rod. But I've been tying this knot for so long, it, I'm really quick at tying it. So I basically just take fluorocarbon line, this is my leader, it's 10 pound leader, and you just double the line over just like that. And then I'm going to take my braid. We're using braid on spinning rods to keep from getting all the line twists because braid doesn't have any memory. I leave myself about a 10 inch tag just like that holding both the lines in my hand and just start spinning and I spin I spin it over about I cross it over about seven times and then once I get it over there seven or eight times and I hold it right here and I come back down the other way seven eight times going back across it going back down the line and then when I get six or seven wraps this way, then you go right back through the same way that you came in and go through that loop. And then when you pull, you're gonna pull both tag ends on this line and both tag ends on this line. You're gonna get it down to where it's cinched pretty close, wet your line, and finish pulling it out right on down. And you can let go of the tag ends and pull it, and that's exactly what the knot looks like. Looks just like that. Then I'm gonna tag, cut this thing as short, as short as I can possibly cut it. Um, I've never had one of them just slip on me. Once it's down to that, it's kind of like a Chinese finger trap. If you guys have ever messed with one of those, that's basically what this knot does to the fishing line.
and then that's all my tag in right there so that's exactly what the knot looks like when it's done and it's 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 a tough it's a tough knot so then my leader line the fluorocarbon being the leader i like the leader to be i'll stop reeling where my knot gets right here between this guide and my reel that's about where i like it or just it's about right here and then with my line about the same length as down to my reel because i am going to tie on to it and that's about how long i cut it every single time so that's it just that simple now the knot with the drop shot we're going to tie a polymer knot and i'm going to use i'm going to use this straight shake gamagatsu that's got this rebarb on it so basically with polymer you're just doubling over your line you're going to leave longer than normal piece down because that's what your weight's going to go on if it's your very first time seeing one of these so run one through like that come back the other way so we got this thing doubled up now we're going to do and i've got this knot also on the last video i did last week if you guys want to see a better layout of it just go through one time just like a granny knot and then you're going to put your hook right through the hole there's going to be a loop right here i put my finger in it that's going to flip over when it cinches down and then i'm just going to pull it in and pull it tight and that is pretty much the polymer to make this hook stand up correctly we're going to take the tag in go through the top side of the eye of the hook with the tag in and that will make your hook stand up vertically every single time then we're going to put our weight right down here we get questions all the time about length on the drop shot weight i would say that just as a general standard i started about 18 inches um, that's about where my standard drop shot is is probably about 18. Twelve to eighteen. That's about where that is. That was probably about thirteen or fourteen. Then let's do the rigging on this worm. So we're going to Texas rig this worm, and that's why I'm using this straight shank hook because down here I'm fishing, like I say, around a lot of heavy cover. So when you're fishing brush piles and things like that, you're going to run it on up past the barb, and then just bring the hook back through, and then just text pose it make sure i get that thing straight it's it's imperative that this worm is straight on this hook because you don't want it to be crooked or have a hump or a lump or anything like that and you want it to lay straight just like that so that's what that's what we're brush piling drop shot looks like just like that it's covered up and this worm will spin a lot more um than if a nose hook so like this this circle hook this is just a one-aught gamagatsu this circle hook that we're using for drop shot and like with smallmouth where you just nose hook your bait and you see a lot rigged that way that bait doesn't spin very much this bait whenever you're reeling it in spins and twists constantly so if you're not using braid if you are using fluorocarbon you do need to put a swivel about two foot above that worm so it's something else in your in your contraption there that's another reason i like the braid this is a great hook up north like there's no problem with it at all it's just it doesn't work very well around brush piles so that's the only reason that, that i use that that style worm hook down here in the south is because a lot of times i am throwing my drop shot around a lot of brush so keep that in mind um, but this is a great hook on smallmouth for sure so i've got a 18 pound test sunline plasma braid tied to a 10 pound test fluorocarbon sunline shooter leader and that is pretty much the setup on a seven foot three falcon spinning rod and it's a medium action i believe this one's actually called the mansfield this is the same thing this is high vis braid 18 pound test but this is just in a light green and i i started using this this year and i think i really like the green better than i like the yellow um just started using it this year it's plasma it's really good stuff it's 18 pound test it, it casts extremely extremely well and this is a ned rig and as you can tell i've already kind of got it rigged up for the smallmouth up north because it's got the uh it's got the sartreuse head on it um, you can use many different kinds of worms on this it doesn't have to exactly be the elastec although they do last a long time the stretchy ones um they do last and they're they're great baits um heads there's all different 
makings of heads from different companies. I do like the one that Z-Man's got right now that's got the Z-Lock on it. If you guys can see that, that's really good stuff. I like it because it does help tend to hold the bait up well on the bait, and I do. I like that a lot. So we're going to slip out here. I don't know if we can catch a fish with it or not, but I'm going to go through the motions of how I fish them and uh, see if we can get a bite or two on a Ned Rig or a drop shot. This one is on the same thing. This was on a seven foot three Kara. This is a new rod by Falcon. This is probably my favorite spinning rod that I own. Uh, seven three medium heavy Kara. The sucker is nice. Like it is the creme de la creme. There's no doubt, but it's got a good price tag with it too, guys. And there's nothing wrong with these low riders for hundred dollars, hundred fifty dollars cheaper. They're they're good rods too. So um, let's go out here. Let's see what we can find and. Uh, Let's look for some structure and cover on the graph, and then we'll we'll see if we can catch fish out of it. I'm looking for anything that's different, right? This is different. We just came out of a bunch of grass up there, really shallow. I'm looking for anything that's different, whether it be a brush pile that's going to stand out, or the edge of a grass line, or uh, a start of a rock pile, anything like that. Just anything that stands out that's different than what uh, the norm is on my graph that I'm seeing. And we're just going to idle around until we find a piece of cover or structure that we think is worth trying to catch a bass off of. See, now this is something different. We just crossed over. Looks like probably part of the creek channel where the creek channel turned. So anything that's different, anything at all, that is something different. Like what we we're talking about. We just idled, you didn't see anything for a while. That is definitely something different. That is a road bed and that appears to be a culvert like an old concrete culvert. And it appears to be about 15 or 16 foot of water. So, I mean, it is primo depth. Now, I've never fished it before. I've never heard anybody talk about it, but we're just idling around. It took a little while, but we found something that is definitely different. This is what we would call structure. It's a great place to start. You can see some school of bait fish right there on it. You can see little dots all around it where those are crappie and bass and different things potentially. So definitely high, high potential. I like that kind of thing. This, it's these big shadows you see, those are big fish sitting on top of it. God help us if they're bass. That's all I can say, God help us. They're probably catfish as big as they are. They're big. Those are big fish. We're gonna turn around and find out. So as far as fishing the drop shot, I've got this road bed down here and I'm, I'm pretty much posted up on the culvert, which should be the sweet spot. It's really deep for this place, but there's fish marked all over it. So really the only thing you're doing is throwing it out there the thing is about 30 foot in front of the boat's all it is looking at it on my live scope. I'm going to let it go all the way to the bottom. One of the biggest things I think guys do wrong with a drop shot is, is they move it too much. Especially in clearer water like when you're smallmouth fishing. I mean, just throw it out there and let it sit because they can see it from 20, 25 feet away, maybe 30 feet away as it goes down. And they can come from 30 foot horizontal, you know, laying on the bottom over there to your worm. And if it's moving all the time, they don't like it so much. They really just like it just being held still. Um, when you get in a place that's got a lot of water color like we do here, then I tend to fish it a little bit more like you would a Texas rig, you know. I kind of pick it up and move it along the bottom. I'm trying to fill the rock and the concrete down there on that culvert and see if I can pull it up over top of a, a log or a rock or something down there and see if I can get one to bite. But a lot of times I just hold it in a spot and just shake it. And that, that in itself is really what helps you get the bite. Good right there with the... I mean, live scope, I mean, it's just unreal looking. And those are fish sitting right on top of it. I mean, that's a great shot of what that looks like. Live scope allows you to pull right back out here on top of it after you graft it. It's just gonna be a matter of how many people fish this thing, because if they don't fish it, dude, we're getting bit. It is a little bit on the deep side. I do wish it was a little shallower. So with the Ned, usually I've got a little bit more action than I do with the drop shot probably because I am hopping and dragging a little bit more but for the most part I want to keep contact with the bottom at all times with it so like you want to make sure that when you cast it out there that you let your line sink until it stops sinking so that you've got good bottom contact and then just do a little small hops that's all I'm looking for just little small hops nothing great big and aggressive um, just want that thing to sit down there and just kind of drag along the bottom don't get a bite Reel that sucker in and throw it another five, ten foot away from where you threw it the last cast. And like I say, let make, make sure that all your line goes out. Just let that thing fall on slack line all the way to the bottom. It's imperative that you've got bottom contact with it. And then once you get down there to the bottom, you just slowly, just a little twitch. And all you're feeling for is a little hop or watch your line. You know, that's why I like using this high vis line. A lot of times I can just see my line just kind of jump. Uh, when it's falling or you know when the wind's blowing and it's harder to feel 
I can get I can detect bites just by watching my line. So that's one reason that we really like the high vis braid too. You know, it really helps in that aspect. I think I've got one right there. Nope, had a rock. Boy, it felt like a fish. That's the old rock bass. Rock rip wrap's a really good place. We're gonna go up here and try this on some rip wrap that we've got in this lake. Usually got a few fish on it and see if we can catch one with a Ned. And uh that's all it is, dude. Throw it in the same place. It's got an open hook, so it does get hung up quite a bit more, but it's just part of the game. Lots of sailboats on this pond. Everybody's a sailor in the middle of Oklahoma. And this is what this bait will do for you is that it'll catch fish when nothing else is catching them because it's like say it's two o'clock you guys can tell it's as hot as it can be and it'll catch bass and it catches big ones it doesn't always just catch little ones but it, it does catch its fair share of small ones too for sure come here little fella the ned that thing will get bites when nothing else will get them. So you guys give it a try, man. Ned Rig 101, open hook, and yeah, it's gonna get hung up. You're gonna lose a few of them, but it's just a piece of lead and little hook and get some bites. We're gonna see if we can catch maybe one a little bit bigger than that. Here's a deal with a spinning reel that's helped me a lot through the years. It's a habit that I got into and I made myself get into it. And I don't even think about it anymore. But every, every single cast that I make with a spinning reel, as soon as it hits, I click the bail over with my hand, not with the reel. And the reason why is I'm trying to avoid line twist. So if I pull it over with my hand, I always set that line in there and I, I give it a nice tug so I know that it's seated in there where it's supposed to be. Um, that's a big deal. It'll save you a lot of time and effort with line twist, uh, clicking that bail and it, it, and it be spinning or something whenever you set the hook on a fish. Just getting that habit of every time that you, after you get done with a clock cast, just click that bail pull that line right in that seat and then you can start reeling and you'll have 90% less issues with uh, line twists and bird nests from uh, the wind, 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 wind bird nests, different things like that. It really helps prevent it. And I know you can get in the habit of it because I've got my 10 year old boy doing it. So I've noticed that even he, after every cast, he doesn't even think about it anymore. He just does it automatically. <laughs> just got that feeling he's a drum. He did that circle, pulling real hard, not coming to the surface probably an eight pound largemouth, but I bet you it's a drum. He's just got that drum pull to him. Don't know how big he is. Yep, old bugle lips. You can always tell a lot of times when you first set the hook with those things that they, uh, they do a little circle in your line. And he's down there trying to get him something to eat too. Saw some guys in a Saw some guys in Kansas. The Kansas Wildlife Department was bragging on their, their drum fishing. <laughs> We're not gonna brag on our drum fishing.